Hello, ladies and gentlemen, I'm the film attorney, and my client has a case. Believe it or not, I'm walking on air. I never thought I could feel so free. Flying away on a wing and a prayer. Who could it be? It's taco, bitch. Kirk Cameron, that dorky kid from that show Growing Pains, grew up to be a dorky evangelical nut who went on to star in a string of low-budget religious films based off those left-behind novels. Kirk Cameron's latest endeavor is a rescue mission to save Christmas. Save it from who, you may ask? One of the products of the social network age happens to be the growth of the atheist movement, which is a who cares issue to most people, but people who are affected by it are scrambling to save what they feel is being taken away from them. One of the main focuses being the removal of Christ from Christmas. Now this comes up every year and it's usually focused on a language issue. I have a very happy holiday there, Mrs. Talbot. Don't use that political language shit with me. It's Christmas. Wish me Merry Christmas. This year's gripe was coffee cups. Once again, who cares issue, right? Well, Kirk Cameron thinks we should care. So let's hear him out. Let's unwrap Saving Christmas and see what Kirk Cameron has to say. And now here's something we're going to see a lot of. Kirk Cameron explaining the point of the movie. I love the cookies. I love the fire. I, I love the presents. I love the stockings. I love the tree. I love the fudge. And I love hot chocolate. That perhaps you should pour some in that obviously empty cup. Okay. So Kirk continues on talking about Christmas. You know, what are they going to do next? Tell us hot chocolate's bad for us? That the, the Druids invented it? First, you should actually put some hot chocolate in that empty cup for them to say that. Now, I got to agree with the prosecutor, Kirk. A little authenticity wouldn't kill you. Dang it! But then Kirk begins to talk about the people trying to take Christmas away from him. Everything you're doing, all this stuff, the images, the, the characters, the traditions, it's all wrong. It has nothing to do with Christmas. There's something that makes people want to be more kind at Christmas. They want to be more compassionate. Mm, very true. Hey, Kirk, tell us your feelings on gay marriage. Ah. Here we are. The real reason this movie has such a low score on Rotten Tomatoes. I mean, a zero percent. Not Snuff bunnies don't even deserve a zero percent. This is nothing more than a lynch mob rating based on a pre-existing hatred of my client, Kirk Cameron. Kirk Cameron does not have popular views regarding gay marriage, which in Hollywood is pretty much career suicide. Don't believe me? Just ask Stephen Baldwin. If you could find him, he, he came out as a right-wing Christian conservative and... Oh, there he is. Steve, what happened? Why aren't you in movies anymore? Strangest thing. Now, many people, myself included, do not agree with Kirk Cameron on this issue. Although I, myself, personally, subscribe to the Patrice O'Neill marble equation. If you tell me 2 plus 2 is 4, uh -huh. and I know it is... But then you shove marbles in your ass. Ah, that doesn't discredit two plus two is four. And since how this isn't Kirk Cameron saving traditional marriage, his views on gay marriage have nothing to do with this movie. And just because the majority of people disagree with him on that issue, and by majority I mean people who want jobs in media, doesn't mean he can't be on to something with this Christmas thing. So, let's hear him out. So the film begins, for real this time, the beginning of Encino Man. We spend a few minutes watching Jesus wander through the snow, and Kirk Cameron narrates us into the credits. Edited by Post Mill Factory? What the hell is that? Is that the editing equivalent of AAV Creative Unit writing most of Godfrey Ho's movies? Good lord, man. What are you, the Dennis Miller of movie reviews? Now, I don't want to get off on a rant here, but Kirk Cameron's views on Christmas are about as logical as Liza Minnelli's belief that the moon was following her like Max Cady around the Xanadu roller rink. Even David Ferry would tell this guy he sounds more paranoid than Bobby Fischer trying to execute the Danish gambit in a chess game with the bear Jew. 
So we start the film's third beginning at the Cameron Family Christmas Party. Well, this looks very nice. And it's always Christmas on the warm side of the door. All right, who wants hot chocolate? I'm good. And for some people, these parties are a good place to meet chicks. Sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost, and that with a burning fire. And? Made evident by speaking in tongues. Of course. <laughs> well, so this is what Kurt Cameron thinks black people are, huh? That guy's black? Is he black? He looks to me like he should be trying to chop off Aladdin's hand. He has kind of a Middle Eastern look to me. I thought he looked Irish. Besides, didn't you just say a minute ago? Given that Kirk Cameron is credited as neither writer nor director, shouldn't it be Darren Jones saving Christmas since he does direct, co-write, and co-star in the film? Yeah, so how is this Kirk Cameron's bad interpretation of black people? If anything, you should blame Freddy Krueger there. He's the one that made the thing. So we approach the much-awaited middle of the film and find out what the guy in the Cosby sweater is so grumpy about. How many kids could we have fed? How many wells we have dug? Yeah. That's Christmas. You're all wrong. This was a child that was born into a world where the world power wanted to kill him just for being born. You need to think of Herod's soldiers moving through the streets, finding babies and murdering them. All right, look, this is why you never put the client on the stand. All right, here's what Kirk Cameron's trying to say, I think, is that out of darkness comes light, right? See, child slaves in Taiwan who work for like five cents a day make G.I. Joe's so you can give to your kid on Christmas and make him happy, which he will then ironically blow up with an M80, giving the kid in Taiwan the gift of job security. Waddling cloth. What is this swaddling cloth? But the Bible brings these cloths back into the story one more time. So that's the true meaning of Christmas, blankets! Now this sounds insane, but that's because Christians really like to go around their elbows to scratch their ass when they're trying to make a point. Rocky Balboa summed up the book of Job in two sentences. You, me, or nobody is going to hit as hard as life. But it ain't about how hard you hit. It's about how hard you can get hit and keep moving forward. How much you can take and keep moving forward. All right, it might have been a little more than two sentences, but it's shorter than the Job story. Christmas is supposed to be a happy holiday where families get together, eat food, and give each other presents. And Christmas has a bit of a dark and unpleasant past, but you know what? So did your breakfast. And secularists, don't secularists, secular, secularists, they don't care about the preservation of druid rituals. You know why? Because they're not trying to take Christ out of Easter. And after what happened to the sheriff last Easter, a little more Jesus might be what that holiday needs. And that's because every Easter activity is really just suited and meant and carried out by five-year-olds. However, these post-adolescent Jesus haters still feel entitled to their Christmas presents. Three words. War on Christmas. Here we go. I can't say Merry Christmas at work no more. I have to say Happy Holidays, but I am not in the days. Yet another one of these Christian movies that claims that the man is trying to take Christmas away from them. And see, once again, back to this issue with the coffee cups. Now, what had happened is Starbucks had decided to just go with plain red cups this year because they didn't want to offend people with Christmas symbols like snowflakes, snowman, Santa Claus, and so forth. They didn't want to offend people that don't celebrate Christmas, so they just put out plain red cups. Now, the fact that there is an impulse to protect people from pictures of cute little reindeer on the side of a coffee cup is a problem all on its own. In fact, it's downright insane. Chinchilla! 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 And while retail outlets are now worrying about whether or not they're going to offend people with a picture of Santa Claus, they don't mind beating the music into your head to keep you hypnotized into buying presents. I mean, there's still Black Friday sales and Cyber Monday sales. You're still expected to buy stuff this time of year. But, hey, let's get rid of Frosty the Snowman. He's offensive. Insane! Chinchilla! 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 And that's the point the film makes through Darren Doan's character. 
aforementioned point I just made is what's been made by Kirk Cameron's character. He just shoved marbles up his butt by talking about that beach towel. And after hearing the rest of his examples, I, he's got a few more marbles up there, too. I believe there's a whole bag. So when you see empty Christmas trees, see an empty cross. And when you see the empty cross, see the empty cloths lying in an empty tomb. All right, all right. Let, let, enough of that. Let's, let's get to the end. What else has this movie done wrong? Let's get to the end of this. I mean, if you were writing this story right now, what would you want to have happen? Uh, Kirk, uh, I'm the wrong person to ask that question to. So come on in to Johnny's Gasoline and Rip Trail and get what you deserve for wearing those outfits. You might not want to ask me either, Kirk. I went ahead and just organized a hip-hop dance crew that encompasses all the joy and gospel burst and excitement that I alone as one man just cannot express. Oh. My. Lord. What is... This company should just change its name to Redenbacher. Sucking on my titties like you wanted me, calling me all the time, that blondie, check out my Chrissy butt. Dang it, is there any party that song won't make it to? And be honest, this scene only partly exists so Kirk can show us that he knows how to do the worm. Well, to his credit, Kirk Cameron can indeed do the worm. For a while, the movie even rode the wave of being the number one worst film of all time on IMDb's bottom 100. I say it's not surprising to most people, because it was at least surprising to one person, Kirk Cameron. Cameron would respond to the negative reviews by going on Facebook and urging people to upvote the movie's audience rating because, quote, we decide what we want our families to see. Mmm, that'll teach those critics. For far too long, they've been forcing you to watch movies that you don't want your family to see. Well, hang on now. Now imagine that you're also, like Kirk Cameron, a fan of traditional family values. A mom, a dad, two kids, a dog, baseball games, or you know what? You're just a 70-year-old woman who's lived a good church-going life. This is pretty much what you have to watch on TV. Well, that's not entirely true. I guess you can always catch an episode of Full House on Nick at Night. But TV now has gotten so dark and so violent and so perverted. So what's a booty call? <laughs> we root for terrible people. And our lines for what's offensive is weird. Walter White watching this girl choke to death on her own vomit. Well, that's okay. I mean, she was probably a smoker anyway. Me, personally, I prefer Breaking Bad to growing pains in terms of entertainment like anyone else. But we've become so numb to shock that we don't really take into account how horrific what we watch is sometimes. But Kirk Cameron isn't numb to it. Kirk Cameron sees it everywhere. Kirk Cameron can't even take his kids grocery shopping without the radio in the supermarket encouraging his kids to binge drink and have sex. And that's just the G-rated stuff. Remember when everybody freaked out over Janet Jackson's hooter falling out at that one Super Bowl? People are concerned about kids seeing those little circles in the middle of Janet Jackson's boob, but no one was paying attention to the song they were singing. By the way, this is another Aisle 5 favorite. Kirk Cameron just seems like a guy that wants his kids to have an innocent childhood. You pretty much don't have a right to that anymore. Now, there has been a growth in Christian films in the past few years, but they're still low-budget propaganda films, and the only time Hollywood ever made a movie for religious people, it still felt the need to give them the finger. Christianity in Hollywood is almost always the bad guy. In fact, the last film I could think of where the protagonists were devout Christians was The Green Mile, which may have unintentionally been the best Christian film ever made. And I think that viewpoint deserves to have movies that are made with this quality cater to them as well. And actors like Kirk Cameron or anybody else in real life should never be cut out of work because they have beliefs that differ from the people around them. I'm the film attorney, and for now, the defense rests. As long as we got each other